Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to get started with Couchbase and ASP.NET MVC. Now what you're going to build is an ASP.NET MVC website. It's going to run on your development machine. You're going to access it through your browser locally. And with this website, we'll be able to perform all the basic CRUD operations. That's create, read, update, and delete operations. In this demonstration, you'll be interacting with profiles, which consist of first name and last name. The Couchbase database will have one bucket that contains profile documents. Each document will be represented in JSON, like so. And each document will have a key that is the username of the profile. Now what you're going to need to get through this guide is Visual Studio 2015, that's what I'm using. The 2013 will probably work too. NuGet, which should be prepackaged with Visual Studio already. And Couchbase Server, I'm using 4.5 beta. Uh, this will probably also work with Couchbase 4, either Community Edition or Enterprise Edition. Follow the instructions on the Couchbase website to install Couchbase and create a bucket. And this guide assumes you have it already running locally. I've also put a link in the description to find my video to show you how to install Couchbase. Now let's get to work completing this guide. This guide also assumes that you're going to have some familiarity with the ASP.NET MVC framework. You should understand at least the basics of controllers, views, I'll be using Razor, and C Sharp. Now to get going here, I want you to get the starter source code sample that I've made available. Open git bash, clone the repo using the git clone command as shown here, and that will download the entire source code both the before and after code. So you can look at the completed project as well as follow along on the incomplete project. Now once you do that, open up the solution file in Visual Studio as I've done here. And you should be able to compile that project in Visual Studio and run the website. Now if you run the website with the incomplete version, you're going to get errors that look like this. And these errors are here to give you a hint as to what to do next in the guide. So now that we're starting from a common baseline, let's write some code to use Couchbase. The first thing we need to do is add the Couchbase.NET client. You can do this with NuGet by right-clicking on References, clicking Manage NuGet Packages, and then go to Browse and search for Couchbase Net Client. It should appear there in the list. Now, I already have mine installed, so it already has a little check mark next to it there. The other way you can do this is if you prefer the PowerShell command line, you can go to the Package Manager console and do install dash package couchbase net client. If I do that, you can see that it already exists in Starter. So I've already done that. Now, let's set up the ASP.NET app to be able to connect to Couchbase. The first thing we need to do is let our app know where the Couchbase cluster is. And the best place to do this is in the global ASAX.cs file when the application starts. Now at a minimum we need to specify one node in the cluster and give that to the cluster helper. Now, this only needs to be done once an application starts. And also when the application ends it's a good idea to close the cluster helper in order to clean up and dispose of resources that aren't needed. So let's get rid of this implementation exception here, and we'll create a new client configuration. Whoops. Client configuration. And to tell this where our nodes are, we'll say new list of URIs. And I only have one node running locally on my machine, but if you have a multi-node cluster, such as in production, you want to tell its client configuration about all of them. I'm also going to say don't use SSL because I'm running this locally. I don't have any certificates running locally. But if you're doing this over the internet especially, you're going to want to use a, a certificate. Then I'll just say cluster helper, initialize, and I'll pass it the config. And there are some other config options, but that's all we need to know for now. And then when the application ends, we want to make sure to say cluster helper dot close to dispose and release any resources that cluster helper is holding on to. 
Now once the cluster helper is initialized, we can start using that to access Couchbase buckets. Now let's talk about the data model and data access. In C Sharp, you can model a Couchbase document by using a plain old CLR object, also known as a POCO. So let's model a very simple profile class. Although C Sharp and Couchbase can certainly handle more complexity, the goal of this guide is to get you up and running. So we'll, we can explore more complex data models later. So here is our very simple model. We have first name and last name. I also have a type in here. I'm creating this and it's going to always be set to profile. Now a Couchbase bucket is usually a heterogeneous collection of documents. So there could be profile documents, there could be other type of documents in there as well. So this is a convenient way to set profile documents apart. And you'll see shortly how this property gets used. So once we have that done, let's create a class that's going to access Couchbase data. So I'm going to open profilerepository.cs. There are lots of data access patterns that you can explore, but we're going to look at a simple repository pattern in this guide because it's just easy to look at and explain. In this repository, we can perform all of the CRUD operations. So let's go through each of these methods individually and we'll implement them as we go. Let's start with the get profile by key method. So each document in Couchbase bucket has a unique key. You can think of a bucket as a giant dictionary. Now that's a gross oversimplification, but it's a starting point. Now this method is set to return a key value pair of string and profile. And the key is going to be the string, which is the Couchbase key. And profile is going to be the document in Couchbase. That's usually stored as JSON, but we will be returning a profile object. Now getting a document by key is an extremely fast operation in Couchbase, and it's always good to work with keys when possible. So we can do this by saying profile equals bucket dot get of type profile and we'll pass in the key. So that gives us the document itself. The document has lots of information, the metadata and, and so on. We're, we're just interested in the value of the document, which is a profile object. And then we will return a new key value pair of string and profile and we'll just send send back the key and the profile document together. And that's all we need to do. We're able to get the document by the key. Now one thing I uh, sort of glanced over here is this bucket. And this is being set here in the constructor using the cluster helper that we set up already in the global ASAX. I'm calling my bucket hello-couchbase. You can call yours whatever you like. Just make sure to change the name of it there. Okay, let's go to something a little more complex, the get all. So now I want to this method to return every profile in the Couchbase bucket. Now we're going to make this method use Couchbase's nickel query, and nickel is the non-first normal form query language. It's a superset of SQL, and it allows you to construct very powerful queries against the document database. In this case, we're just going to get all the profile documents. So let's start with a request and we'll say query request dot create and I'm going to write some nickel there. So I'll write that in a second and I'm going to say request dot scan consistency is scan consistency dot request plus. I'm not going to cover what that means in this guide. Um, just go ahead and use request plus and we can discuss why I'm doing that in a later blog post or later video. I'll do bucket.query. I'm going to do a query that maps to a key value pair of string profile. And I'm going to pass in the request to that. And then finally I'm going to return the response. So right now the response is a list of key value pairs response.rows, I should say, is a list of key value pairs. I want to return a dictionary. So I'm going to say to dictionary, and I'll do a lambda to map the key, and another lambda to map the value. And that'll give us a dictionary. So now what we need in this string here is a nickel query 
that will map to what we're trying to return, which is a key value pair. So I need to start with a select. And to get information about the document, I can use this meta keyword, so meta.id. I'm going to map that to the key in the key value pair. So I'll just say as key. And the next thing I want to do is I want to do two object. And we'll just use, uh, we'll use hc here. That'll be our, our alias for the bucket, as we'll see in a second. And we'll say as value, because that's going to map to the value of a key value pair. So that's our key and our, our document. Then I'll just say from. Our bucket's name is hello couch base. I'm going to alias that as hc. And I'm going to put a where clause in here, which isn't strictly necessary for this example, but I want to say where type equals profile. And the reason I'm doing that is if I decide to add documents of other kinds to this bucket, this will still limit the results to just the ones that are of type profile. All right. Now, again, I'm not going to cover scan consistency. There are some trade-offs to consider when using different scan consistency options. However, Request Plus is the easiest one to use for a simple guide like this. So we'll just use it Request Plus for now. If this SQL syntax seems a little awkward to you, there are some other ways to go about it. So I urge you to check out the link to Couchbase library, which is not officially supported by Couchbase, but it's still an amazing tool. And I also encourage you to check out the and the full nickel documentation to see what other options you have here. Now, one more thing. In order to run nickel queries, you're going to need to create a global index on the bucket you want to query. If you don't, you're going to get a runtime exception from the SDK. So to create this index, just go to the query workbench. So this is the Couchbase console. I clicked on the query tab. And then I want to run a query that says create primary index on hello couchbase or whatever your bucket is called and hit execute. And that will show something like this as the result. And now you'll have a primary index on your bucket, which will allow you to run nickel queries. Okay. All right. So let's go on to the next method in the repository, which is save. Now save has a parameter that is a key value pair. So this represents one document with a key and the document value being passed in as the parameter model. We'll get rid of this exception here. Now in order to save a document to Couchbase, we first have to construct a document in memory. So we'll do new documents of type profile. And inside that document, we'll set the ID. And that corresponds to the key. So we'll do model.key which is going to be the username, if you recall. And then content is going to be the model.value. Those are both coming from this model, which is the key value pair. And then, now that I have the document created, I'll say bucket.upsert the document. Now you may be wondering, what's this upsert about? Now first of all, it operates on the document key. So this is a single document operation. If the document with that key already exists, it's going to update the value of the document. This is the up in upsert. If a document with this key doesn't exist, a new document will be created with that key. That's the cert, as in insert. Now the only restriction on keys is that they must be unique within a bucket. Finally, let's go on to the delete method here. We just have a, a key passed in. This is a really easy thing to do here. We say bucket.remove, and we pass in the key, and that's going to remove the document from the bucket. Now, uh, another note I want to say before we continue is that under normal circumstances, I prefer to have the I bucket right here get passed in through a constructor and created with an IOC container. But I've omitted that from this guide just to keep it simple. I definitely recommend doing that though. Now that we have our repository created, let's go over to the MVC home controller, which has already been set up with uh, using the repository and the views. The actions use the repository you created, 
and we pass along those objects to the views. Now once you've implemented the repository and added the setup code to globalasax.cs, you should be ready to compile and run. But before we do that, let's just look over these actions real quick and see what's going on. So again, I'm just newing up the profile repository in the constructor. I would again recommend you use an IOC container dependency injection for that. Here's the index method, which is just getting all the profiles from the repository and passing them right along to the view. The add action is going to pass basically a blank key value pair into the edit view. And then the save action will be called from the form to call the save method in the repository. It's just going to construct a key value pair based on the key and the profile that's passed in from that form and then redirect back to the index page. And then the edit action is going to be very similar. It's using the same edit view as add, but in this case it's going to first grab the document out of Couchbase and pass it into the view because it's an existing document that we're going to be editing. And finally delete, it's just going to pass that key right into the delete repository. I'm also going to put some JavaScript uh, up there to uh, confirm that you want to delete this document. Let's look at the views real quickly here. Here's the index. It just gets a dictionary of those profiles and it will loop through them and call a partial for each one and pass it off to the profile partial. If there aren't any documents yet, it's going to say there are no people yet. Here are the, here's the partial for the profiles. This is just some bootstrap markup. It just shows the first name, last name, and also the username. And it constructs an edit and delete link for those documents. There's also this delete profile class here. That's what I use to uh, run the JavaScript to confirm that you want to delete. And then finally, here's the edit view. This just takes in a single key value pair of uh, the key and the profile. It creates a standard uh, MVC form here. And I want to draw your attention to this portion right here. What this is doing, since this form, this view, has to process both the add and the edit actions, it's checking to see if the key has been set or not. If the key has been set, then we're going to make that key a hidden value on this form so that when we post it back to the home controller action, the save action, it's going to know which document to save it to. And it's also going to just show the username and not allow us to change it because that is the key. Otherwise, if the key is not set, we're going to show a form for the username and says, please enter the username here, and that's going to act as the key. The rest of the form is the same for both add and edit. It's going to show text boxes for the first name and last name and the submit button. Okay, so let's start it in the browser and see if everything works. Alright, so here is the home page. This is the index that's getting all the profiles from the bucket. And right now there are none in there, so it says there are no people yet. If we go over to the Couchbase console, go to Data Buckets and Hello Couchbase, and click on Documents, we'll see the same thing. There are no documents currently in this bucket. Let's go back to our website here and click Add Profile. Let's actually add someone as a profile here. Put Alan Turing and Submit. We'll send this back to the index page and we'll see that Alan Turing is now in the list. If we go back over to the Couchbase console, we'll see that that document has appeared. And if we edit it, it'll look about what we expected at the very beginning of this video. We can do this again and add somebody else. Let's say, let's add John von Neumann. I think I spelled his name wrong here. J-O-H-N. So now we have two profiles. We go back to Couchbase Console, there should be two documents in that bucket. Now let's exercise the edit, the update part of the CRUD. So we'll edit John von Neumann here and we'll add some exclamation points. He's a very exciting person. And hit submit. So notice that it made a change to the document. There's now exclamation points here in the index. And if we edit the document itself, the changes show up there as well. 
Finally, we can delete. So let's click on the delete button here next to Alan Turing. We'll get a JavaScript prompt that says, are you sure you want to delete? OK. And it's been deleted. If we go back to the Couchbase console, we can see the A Turing is no longer there. So we've covered uh, create, read, update, and delete. And congratulations if you've been following along. You've just developed an ASP.NET MVC application that uses Couchbase. Thank you for watching.